Okay. All right, hello. Um, I'm Justin Wu. Um, I'm an Asian American guy living in Helsinki, randomly enough. And so today I'll talk about some role list fun with PureScript. So it's like some type level stuff. So it's a little bit like on the deep end of the pool, but I figured like uh, instead of giving like a just general talk, I would talk about something that's like kind of unique to PureScript and hopefully like fun. So like, uh, yeah, like what is PureScript, right? Just real fast. Like it's a pure functional language that's strictly evaluated and it has higher kind of types. So instead of writing like map functions specifically to list, you have instances of like functor for the list. Uh, it has type classes with functional dependencies, so you can kind of uh, determine how instances get uh, resolved. There's a lot of really good tooling with uh, PureScript IDE, server, and client that ship with the compiler. So like, uh, whether you use like Vim, I Emacs, uh, VS Code, Atom, or even Sublime Text, like you get basically the same experience and the same like working auto-completion that's like instant. And then uh, yeah, another nice thing that we have is that all the packages have docs on Pursuit. So if you just go on Pursuit, you can find like, well, all the published packages. Uh, and like our pulp tool lets you get started with projects just doing like pulp in it. And uh, something that's really unique to uh, PureScript is that we have type holes with type directed search. So if you put in a type hole and you say, I don't know what goes here, then uh, the compiler will actually tell you, like, if after searching through your dependencies for uh, the type signature that matches, it'll tell you, like, what matches were actually there. And yeah, there's, like, no runtime, so all, all the JavaScript that's compiled, you can kind of copy paste it if you want to. And it, there's, no, um, there's no, like, magic step about, like, what has, like, specific runtime representations. And the thing I'll be talking about specifically today is that it has row types. So like, what are row types, right? It's an unordered collection of fields where the key is a symbol that's a type level a string, and the value is the kind. So typically, like, if you're working with a record, it's going to be type. So as an example, like, our data, we have a data uh, type record, and it's created by using a row of type, and then gives you back a type, right? And so if you think about like, uh, the type alias of person, where you have this record for name, string, age, number, then what the actual th thing that's going on there is that it's a record that's being constructed with the row passed in for, well, name, string, age, number. And then if you've looked at any like, pure script examples, it's, it's the same way with our effect. So whereas in uh, Haskell, like, you just have IO and then your result, in, PureScript, we use a phantom type so that you have, this you have these uh, kind effects and you have different data types of these effects. And so F works by having this phantom type uh, parameter that has all the effects that go on in your application and then the result. So like, it, yeah, I mean, like we like lists, right? Like lists are easy to work with. So if we have a collection, why not work, as it, work with it as a list? So what we have in uh, PureScript is we have this kind row list. And so the row list has like two constructors, right? It has the nil, which is just the empty list, and it has the cons, where you have this uh, kind of a pairing of the key and the value, right, of the, row, of the uh, record rows, and then you give it the rest of the list. So like you, if you take like the person row from before, it's the name string, age number. So this turns into a cons of the name symbol, string, and then cons of the age symbol and number, and then nil. And so if we work with this, uh, the way you like, uh, actually match on this for instances is that you use type classes, right? You, you use your type classes to say what parameters you want, and you use the instances to, to say like, how you want to match them. And so, for a simple example, I'm just going to go through this uh, keys type class. So the keys type class takes one parameter, row list of the, of like the, uh, of the row list that I defined before. And then I have a one method, keys implementation, which is going to take a row list proxy of the row list and then return a list string. So, and just as a reminder that like, uh, a phantom type is really nothing more special than uh, parameterized data type, where 
any of the ramifications don't have the type, right? So it's just something that exists on type level that you carry around as witness. So like if you've worked with like nothing and you've typed it as like maybe string, then it's the same thing. Where in the case of the proxy, you have the type level information, but nothing uh, in the runtime. And so we have our instance for this keys class that's called nil, and it's going to just be the empty, the monoid empty, the identity of a list which is empty. And so if we look at the cons instance, it's just going to be fairly simple, right? Like that we know from before that it's going to be the uh, name and the symbol, uh, knit the symbol name and the value. And when we're just going to get the keys, we don't care about what the value is, but we do need to say like this symbol is actually a symbol, right? So we could do some symbol operations on it. So we do need to use the is symbol constraint. And then we want to set the constraint that the rest of the list also has instances for this keys so that like, we can get the keys from the rest of the list. And then our implementation becomes that we take the first and cause it to the rest, where first is the reflected string back into the value level, and then the rest is the rest of the list that's, rest of the row list that's been turned into list of strings. And that's about it. So if we uh, want to work with this, like you, you don't really want to like require that your users give you a row list directly, row list proxy directly. That, that's just kind of like bad usability. So since we wrote this uh, class for row list, we should uh, wrap it in like a more reasonable API. So I wrote this. Uh, so it, for example, I use this uh, keys function where I, have, I um, only require that the user give me the actual record so that uh, it's a record row, right? And then using this row to list feature, I can convert that row into a row list. And then I can use that row list with the constraint that it has the instance for my type class. And I can turn my, well, I can get the keys out of the record through the row list. And then, yeah, like since we're not using the actual record here, it kind of becomes a glorified proxy, right? But in the case of like a lot of the more interesting things, then you'd actually need to pass through the record. But yeah, and then if you actually use this, then it looks kind of boring, right? Like you say, like, okay, I'm going to traverse the structure and I'm going to print out the things, and then I want the list of the keys back by calling keys with the record a with the fields like a1, b2. But uh, other than this, like, there's a whole bunch of applications for row list. So whenever you can like, just generally uh, iterate through rec rows of fields of a record, and you can also like, uh, set up your type classes so that you can iterate multiple rows, it, it lets you do stuff like um, a parsing uh, JSON. So instead of having to set up like, generic uh, representations and whatever stuff, or doing, writing a whole bunch of boilerplate, in PureScript, if you just have the record type alias, then you can automatically get the, uh, rec the JSON deserialization for free. I also wrote a demo where I can actually use this same feature to uh, restrict what kind of data types I can find. And then I can restrict them so that they're actually safe to send through Elm ports. So I can, I can just uh, embed Elm applications inside of PureScript. And the same thing for like a TypeScript. And I've also, Using this, like being able to make a CycleJS library, because in CycleJS you want to have like this uh, driver. You want to have this main function that takes in like your sources and you produce a sync, and that sync gets fed into drivers, and the drivers themselves call get called with this and then produce a sync that goes back right. So it's like an A to B and B to A, and by actually um, iterating through the records, like it. Pe like uh, pairwise, or rather in the, implementation, in the implementation, it's triplet-wise. But by iterating these uh, row lists together, we're able to do this kind of stuff. And then also, uh, Antti Holvikari is working on some uh, type-safe index DB uh, stuff, where he uses a bunch of this row list information to figure out if like, the records that he's working with have the correct fields or not. And then there's a whole bunch of other demos also. But there's just like so many usages that I can't list all these. But yeah, I mean, uh, like it's 
pretty scary, I guess, if you don't write it in PureScript yet, or if you do write PureScript, but you don't use these. So it's kind of like, uh, yeah, like you don't need to necessarily do this type level stuff, but then as you like, start using the libraries more and more, you'll learn about them, and then you'll start becoming a math scientist and writing your own. And then the same thing with like, defining your own type classes and like, working with them. Like A lot of times, you don't necessarily need to, but sometimes you actually will have a specific type class that makes sense for your application to have. And then, yeah, like uh, having the constraints and throwing them around, it looks kind of like uh, alien language at first. But then as you start using it more and more, and you start like changing things from concrete implementations to more, gener more general uh, like implementations, you, you start being able to like get rid of your custom code and just like work by adding a few constraints for what kind of operations you want to have. But yeah, actually, like, it's, we kind of like blazed through this, but that's about it for my talk. So just ask me questions on Twitter anytime, and I have more examples about like, how to do mapping of records or zipping multiple records together. And we're, we're kind of active on IRC, but uh, most of our dis discussion goes on and, uh, functional programming Slack uh, on the PureScript channel. And then I, we try to like, post stuff on the subreddit so that people can get involved and start learning PureScript. Yeah. Thanks.